All right, welcome back to the Good Morning Ninja Show. And uh, for those who are done day with us from the beginning, we like thank you for staying with us. And uh, for those who have participated, on how they do well. We just finished uh, one better interview with one better person based on all the uh, new levels where the world don't decide to take in a new turn due to the coronavirus pandemic. We kind of think of how we could take, you know. Um, look into Nigeria and see the way we will fit uh, support and grow uh, the Nigerian economy by purchasing things from Nigeria. So we move on to another conversation we get with uh, Dr. Omokweju uh, Afanu. She's uh, a hospitality person. For those now we know with hospitality, be people be involved in uh, hotel things, you know, keeping people you know relaxed and stuff like that. So we're going to be having a conversation based on say uh, the pandemic has happened, and uh, we would like to know how the industry is coping. Uh, welcome to the show, Madam. Hi. Hi. How thank are you, you doing? Having... How are you doing? Very well, thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, first of all, would you like we always say we would like to know how are you? How are you doing? <laughs> it's a very valid question <laughs> now to ask how are you because the whole system of the world has changed. So how are you? Would like to know that. Oh, uh, how will we say we're we're here we're surviving. Um, it's not been easy, but um. We thank God. Hmm. And we know that the hospitality space has been one of the most hard hit during this period uh, due to the impact of COVID-19. Would you please shed some light on some of the ways on in which the hospitality business has been affected by COVID-19 in Nigeria? Uh, well, as we all know that um, the hotels have been shut down for the past um, three months, almost three months. Mm -hmm. uh, and. Um, with the borders closed, it also makes it a lot difficult for hotels to operate because um, we need the borders to be open. Nobody's going to be in Lagos and want to use a hotel. And then with the government locked down with hotels as well. So definitely hotels are one of like the worst hit. And um, we don't know what is going to happen without conferences, without people traveling and um, having to um require hotel services mm -hmm. actually pretty tough for hospitality industry right now and uh, seeing that uh, this has happened uh a, a lot of uh, people have, a lot of industries have been trying to adapt to new you know measures getting new ideas on how they can you know function so as the hospitality uh, industry what would you say are the, uh, are the new um, um, developments that uh, you can say you're putting in place to be able to, you know, still stay afloat in a time like this? Because uh, the hotel business has been, yeah, like hotels have been shut for almost three months now. And the coronavirus pandemic is increasing. It's not like it's reducing. So it's going to be here for a period of time. So what are these new, uh, you know, developments would you say that, uh, okay, the industry is looking at putting in place? Um, well, basically, the main thing is guest safety. And um, while looking at guest safety, you're also looking at the safety of your staff mm -hmm. because um, nobody wants to come to a place that is not safe. And um, nobody wants to be concerned about um, getting infected from a staff or you also don't want your staff getting infected from guests. So yeah. the key thing right now is guest safety and um, how do you, what steps are you putting in place to ensure that um, your guest is going to be safe when they come into the hotel? You know, so it's even advised that two, two days after a guest stays in a room, you don't go into clean a room. I've gone on so many courses. We're advocating on so many courses as well for the hospitality sector in line with the COVID-19 um, pandemic so that your staff understands the protocols to adopt. They understand um, what the industry entails now, you know, because if we don't, um, if we don't look at these things, then we're going to be in a mess because so there's so many people that visit hotels so you can have a hotel that has like a thousand people mm -hmm. like eco hotel that has almost like a thousand rooms so if you have a thousand people interacting you have meetings you have conferences so that is like one of the worst places that the pandemic can spread so mm -hmm. every hospital it's not even just about the rooms alone even food safety because we don't know nobody really knows exactly the um, mechanism of spread of the virus. So you don't even want your guests to get um, infected by consuming from your restaurant or using your buffet service or stuff like that. So it's really, really tough for the 
industry and everybody just needs to prepare for the new normal. So speaking of preparing for new normal, there are certain adjustments that are going to be made. You know, for example, with flight, we're going to start seeing that uh, the flight attendants are most likely are going to be flying with protective gear. We're going to see that most of, we foresee that even in economy or sorry, in, yeah, economy, there will no longer be three seats. We're foreseeing that to maintain social distancing, there'd be a reduced number of passengers that a particular airplane can carry at a particular time. If this has come to stay for a while, what are some of the changes that you think that the hotel would implement? And I'm asking because you've mentioned now that part of the trainings you've gotten would be that if someone is in a room two days after the person leaves the room, no one should go into the room. That's because it's assumed that the virus can stay alive for as much as 24 to 48 hours. Now, in terms of sharing towels, having breakfast, what are some of the changes you think that the hotel space or hotel businesses would implement if this has come to stay for a while? Yes, so basically, when you look at, um, uh, we're talking about cleaning and um, towels and linens and stuff like that. The good thing about the virus is that it's killed by soap. And standard protocol is once a guest checks into a room or checks out of a room, you wash your linen. So once you wash the linen, so that has taken care of the viral uh, spread from towels or bed sheets and stuff like that. But the main thing is now the surfaces. So a lot of people are moving away from handheld menu, having um, your room service menu in printed form. So people are looking at how to make this more um, technology oriented. So you hardly have things, surfaces that you're touching to reduce the level of exposure mm -hmm. while still incorporating better hygiene um, techniques, you know, ensuring that all surfaces are properly wiped, sanitized after a guest checks in or checks out, you know, just to ensure that it's safe, not just, just basically not safe for everybody because it's not just about safety of your, um, what do they call it, of your guests, but also of your staff. So that's one of the reasons why two days is always advised before even anybody goes in because uh, the virus is still active. Fine, your staff is going to wear PPE, but you just can't tell what, um, what they could expose themselves to and how they could be careless in in the discharge of their duties. So you don't want your guests, your staff to actually contract the virus by going into a room too early and exposing themselves unnecessarily to um, the virus, you know. So those measures are going to be in place. I'm sure buffet service for now is going to be um, practically eliminated for a while because these are areas that someone, with an, someone that is infected can touch something in the buffet area and then somebody else touches it and before you know it everybody that that has visited the buffet service that day gets infected one way or the other so it's pretty tough it's going to affect not just the hospitality industry we're going to have events a lot of events have moved online we're having this skype meeting now before we probably have come to the um studio for mm -hmm. this um to have interview. this conversation so, yes yes yeah, so this 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 is going to change the way life as we know it. So many things is going to change. But we're just hoping that um, it's not going to affect the industry a lot because if people are not traveling, they will not need hotels. And if they're not needing hotels, what's going to happen to the rooms that we have? What's going to happen to the industry as a whole? And that's one of the industries that has the highest number of employment. So you're looking at for every... For a well-staffed hotel, if you have 100 rooms, you should have close to about 100 staff. You know, so how many how many um, industries or businesses has the capacity to employ that many people? Mm -hmm. So it's a major problem, which we're praying that is going to resolve once the pandemic has come down or the borders have been opened. And do you think this, this will incur more cost on the part of the consumers, on part of your your uh, your guests? Oh, well, that is still being looked at because if you're not operating at full capacity as it is and you have um, operational costs that you're going to be incurring, so mm -hmm. there's a tendency you're going to be using more chemicals which are more expensive, you know, so that's why sometimes the safest for me, I'll say one of the safest ways is to just to avoid expending much more in terms of cleaning chemicals and disinfectants and stuff like that. You just... Um, I'll, I'll apply the two-day policy, which helps reduce the viral to almost to 
negligible levels. Do you understand? So it helps save you on those expenditures because a lot of expenditure is going to go into this. You need properly trained staff. So you're going to be probably investing in training your staff as well mm -hmm. to ensure that um, they meet the new normal and they understand what it entails, educate them on personal hygiene, educate them on how to use the right PPE, you have to deploy PPE, even if we weren't using them before because you need to protect your staff. They need to ensure that guests understand how to wash their hands. So you're going to be spending a lot more on so washing your hands because you're going to be washing your hands all the time. So it's it's pretty tough, but when you're just reopening, you don't want to take yourself out of the market. So it's going to be tough for people to actually say, oh, we're going to increase the cost of our rooms because right now there's there's going to be a lot of supply and then the demand is going to be low. So everybody's going to be competing for the same market. So what is going to stand you out is either your service or your pricing. And it all depends on what people are actually looking at with the economic downturn. I'm sure a lot of people are going to be looking at, they're going to be looking at not just how much you're going to spend, but how safe are they going to be when they visit your facility. Mm -hmm. So those are two key factors that you want to consider. So it's not even about the ambience anymore. It's about what level of safety, safety can you offer you to your have. guests and then how affordable is that going to be for your guests to pay? Uh, yeah, totally. We, we agree with that. Now, looking at uh, I uh, technology wise, you know, because uh, you were making uh, comments about how you were trying, they will try to make sure that uh, you have less contact with uh, people and things like that. You know, um, I, in, I, in China, there are some hotels already that have, uh, you know, gotten the service of robots to deliver yeah. stuff and, you know, to have all the conversations they need. People don't have, meet people, uh, you know, anymore. So how would yeah. you uh, say that uh, as a Nigerian um, industry, as the uh, hospitality industry in Nigeria, would you, would you see that as a possible avenue to look into? Are you guys, you know, is it something that is okay? In a, in a, in a few time, we can probably look at this uh, these measures and use that so that you can get the trust of your consumer to let them know that okay, we're not going to have contact with you when you come in. This is in place, and you know, and do you think it's a way forward? <clears throat> well, I I wouldn't. It, it 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 looks like it's supposed to be a way forward, but when you look at the economic impact of it, yeah, on your employment um, pool is going to be devastated. So while whilst the hospitality industry is like, a, it's, there's this level of human touch that you still need. Um, right now, what I'm looking at is more of keyless, um, less contact, like keyless entry. Mm -hmm. So I don't need to take a key from the receptionist. Yeah. So yeah. what kind of software can we deploy that helps you um, uh, what do you call it? That helps you access, get into your room without actually um, using your card key. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. what, uh, how, what apps can you deploy on your phone that will help make this easier? Uh, how do you make payments without having to actually give your ATM card? Yeah. Or, having or use cash, yeah. Advocated. But taking the human touch out of it is almost like so impersonal, which is not really what the hospitality industry is about. It's about the human touch. It's about um, that, that, that level of um, interaction. So it's just going to be, how do you make that happen while still maintaining certain levels of safety for your guests and for your staff? Hmm. Okay, um, before we let you go, let us know, you know, how exactly what words of advice encouragement you've shared some very helpful angles and perspectives to look at this from but for hoteliers you know those in the hotel business those looking to go into the hotel business right now i'm sure that a lot of people who are looking to go into the hotel business are having second thoughts but those already in the business who feel trapped you this is what you do you're an expert at this what words of encouragement would you give to them so what i'll say to anybody out there is that um, the key thing you need to look at is the safety of your guests and the safety of your staff. And um, you need, need to do whatever it is to ensure that your guests are safe. If you have to train your staff, you need to train as you. It's not even if, you must train your staff mm. to understand the new normal. 
And right now, I would not even advise anybody to go into the space for now. At least let them look at the next six months and see what happens because nobody knows what is going to happen. Nobody knows when the borders are going to be open and when it opens, how what's going to be the traffic of um, guests or visitors mm -hmm. coming into the country, into the state. So it's it's something that everybody just needs to hope and pray that um, the best is going to happen, that we're going to go back to the highs that we were in 2019. A lot of organizations have cut down on marketing. Does it, they, they don't even have a marketing budget, for not just in Nigeria. They don't have a marketing budget right now for hospitality industry because there's nobody you're marketing to. So mm -hmm. just keep your costs down. Look at how well, how you can implement um, services that would ensure safety of everybody and just pray for the best. All right. Great, great stuff. Uh, thank you for this uh, conversation. And we're hoping that, uh, like I said, we are all hoping that uh, the coronavirus uh, pandemic doesn't stay too long so that a lot of businesses and industries can uh, reopen and get back into uh, building the economy. Thank you very much for this uh, conversation and all the, the advice you've uh, put through for people who are looking to probably venture into the business or the ones who are there and feel trapped you know, but uh, mm -hmm. thank you very much yeah. for this conversation. Thank, thank you, you Dr. Mokbeju Afanu, the founder My of Cooperative pleasure. Hospitality. Mm -hmm. And that is where we wrap up the conversation for now. Yes, yeah. To enjoy more of this, our Ugon Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her. To enjoy more of this, our Ugon Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.